So you're welcome back. We're going to now be talking about physical evidence. I want to talk about physical evidence, which I mentioned earlier on, where basically how, how can how can we um, provide physical evidence of the superior nature of our, of our product? And at the end of the day, how are you able to showcase that your product stands out against any other competitor in the market that exists? And physical evidence, it refers to everything your customer sees when interacting with your business. And this can include what? The physical environment where you provide the products or services. And of course, when you talk about the physical uh, in, environment, we're talking about also the aesthetics. The, of course, the physical structure is there, but the aesthetics, the brand color that is used for that um, you know, product. So for example, Management Insights, we can see our our, our color um, brand is blue and white. And that goes a long way in, in, in portraying who we are as a um, that's as a business or a company, but again, it, uh, but again, it helps to then determine or give people an idea of who you are as an individual. So the physical environment becomes important. Then your packaging in terms of how your product looks, but um, and that this goes back again to link to product itself. Um, but um, if you can recall, I talked to you about um, the quality of a product, but packaging really matters. A lot of times. We tend to see how products um, are left on the shelf, not because they're they, they, they're not quality in terms of taste and consistency, but just because the packaging is not good enough. I, I, I've known a lot of products that the packaging doesn't look as nice as their other uh, rival brands, but because the package of the rival brand is, is better composed, at the end of the day, people tend to stick with that. And so, and that's why we say first impressions matter because at the end of the day, it is how you package your products that then determines if a person is going to buy the product or not. Um, a good example of that is books. You know, when you have a book, the title, the way the, book, the front cover of the book looks determines whether someone's going to pick up the book and decide to read it. And not necessarily because they know what's in the book because they don't know what's inside the book, just like he wouldn't know what's inside the package. But um, but because um, they can only go by what they see and their impression and, or their perspective of what they see, that will then determine if people will actually buy the product or not. So your packaging goes a long way in terms of that. Then the layout or interior design, um, of course, um, whether you're talking about the physical structure in terms of that and how that then people perceive that layout and design in terms of the aesthetics again, as we talked about earlier on, and then how um, it, it determines the perspective or how people perceive that product or the image of that company at the end of the day. Um, again, it doesn't matter how good your product is, whether it's a service company or whether it's a physical product um, that you have. At the end of the day, what, what people will look at is the company first, how they see it, the logo, the aesthetics, um, the people that work uh, in that organization, how they treat them, that then will determine whether they would want to even pursue, um, you know, um, engaging in your product or services at all. So it's important, um, you know, how you're able to put down the layout or the interior design to suit. And remember, we always talk about the target market. So whoever your target market is focused on, will then determine what type of layout or interior design will work for that target market. If if your service delivery is for kids, automatically you know you have to create aesthetics or layout or design that works for kids. If it's for women, you know automatically you have to then, the layout will be towards women. Um, you see this a lot with um, 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 beauty brands, whereby you have beauty brands for women and you see how and they're able to create um, brands um, in terms of the packaging, whereby it's feminine in color. Even the the, the way the write up or the font design is is more fem feminine than masculine. And if it's towards the target market is towards men, again they make it masculine. Understand that that's that's who their target market is. So um, that layout and interior goes a long way in in them making sure um, you know you attract the right people or the right customers. Then of course your branding. Your branding here is talking about the image, um, what you communicate to the people in terms of what is expected. Um, of course, 
how you portray yourself, not just for the customers, but even the employees that work for you. Because remember, we're in, we're in the information age whereby information gets out easily. If you're an organization that doesn't cater to all your stakeholders, because you're looking at all the stakeholders here in terms of the employees, the customers, your immediate community, and they're not happy with you, then you're going to have a problem. And this going, this is going to affect your your branding, your image in the company. But then also, um, who, um, how are you able to give back to society in terms of social responsibility? Goes a long way also. So we know that nowadays, most organizations, whether big or small, um, look towards how to give back to society the way they've given to them and understanding that um, you know, trying to portray yourself as an organization that's giving back also becomes essential and important. And this is all part of the physical evidence when we talk about physical evidence and providing that. So the, the location of service delivery also takes on significance. Where is your, your, your service delivery? How are you um, going about the service delivery in terms of actually distributing your products across the board? Again, as I told you, nowadays, most organizations do direct um, selling whereby it doesn't have to go through the middleman again. So with that, these service deliveries, how are you able to make sure your product gets to the consumer on time is all part of the physical evidence. And again, it ties to the process that we just talked about earlier on. Then the level of comfort and attractiveness of a service location may make a lot of difference to the user experience. And this goes back to the layout and design and how you're able to make sure that the, the, custom, the cons- customer experience is something that is memorable and will make them want to come back to to, to the organization. Again, depending on who your target market is will determine how that um, how you know the, the service location should look like, the aesthetics, the physical structure, um, you know, the layout designs and the identity. And then even this the, the, the service delivery process will then um, give that experience that you're looking for at the end of the day. Then a calm and soothing environment with thoughtful comfort measures may provide a sense of security. Um, to a new customer, which will make them return. So always think about what will make the customer never forget the experience. And then that will always make them come back. And that's um, physical evidence as one of the seven P's of marketing. So with that, we're able to look at the seven P's of marketing uh, or marketing mix. And we're able to look at, of course, we have the price. We are, sorry, we have the product, we have the price, we have the place, we have the promotion able to look at process, physical evidence. And with that, we're able to um, understand that um, for you to have um, or to be able to incorporate the right type of strategy, you have to focus on your target market and understand who your customers are. And once you're able to understand the dynamics of the demographics, their characteristics, their behavior, and how they react to certain situations, it goes a long way in knowing the mixture of strategies that need to be adapted towards um, you know, selling your product and making sales as anybody would want. All right, so thank you with that. Please, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I kept it short and simple. Um, please do comment, make your comments. You can give us an idea of areas that you want us to focus on. We could also focus on that. Please also don't forget to share and like. So I hope to see you next time. This is Management Insights, Associate Professor Harlan Bye.